Katie Cleveland. A good knife can make a big difference in the kitchen, but it helps if you know what that knife is supposed to do. And here to talk about several types and their uses is Lance Ambrose from Service Wet Grinding Company. I love taking my knives there because when they come back, they're like brand new. Like razors, yeah. Yeah, sharp knife's important. They always say a sharp knife is a safe knife, a dull knife is dangerous. That's right, because then you're trying to push hard with the knife, and that's where you're uh, more apt to cut yourself. So you slip off something and boom. And that's how you cut yourself, yeah. Okay, so we are talking before about some people only have uh, one or two knives, but you really need a few more for different things. What's the bird's eye load on, on this uh, caper well, here? We'll talk about some of the names of knives and how they're used, how the shape affects how they're used. Uh, these here are chef knives. One of the confusions with names of knives is that they're, uh, they'll have more than one name. So this will be called a chef knife, a cook's knife, sometimes it'll be called a French knife, mm -hmm. and of course everyone likes to call it the chopper. Oh yeah. Um, and, and the chef knife, uh, here's two sizes, a lot of knives will have two or three sizes. Uh, this is what they use at the commercial restaurants. This other one is a little more useful at home for smaller preparations. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really just for chopping fairly small things, maybe one inch is about all you really want to be uh, chopping with that. Anything bigger, if you get something like uh, something like this, you're really getting into a dangerous situation trying to chop that. Um, and then... Uh, well, this also, is an acorn squash, and it's, it's hard as a rock, right? Yeah, it's hard, and, uh, and so it, you have more of a chance of slipping. So you don't want to chop something big like that uh, if it's hard. If you have something softer like this, your hands away from it, sometimes it's good to um, have a big knife to uh, cut something big, but you really want to watch what you're cutting big. Usually a smaller knife would be... Um, uh, more useful for cutting large things. Probably the way you hold it means something important too, huh? Yeah, you want to, um, you, it's best to hold it with your wrist on top. That way your hand uh, has a better motion to it. You want to uh, use that slicing action if you're uh, cutting something big. Um, and so th that's for, uh, there's two types of uh, knives. There's a chopping knife and then everything else is really a slicing knife. Uh, this knife here is called a straight boning knife. Nobody really uses that for boning, so the manufacturers now are calling it a, a utility knife. Mm -hmm. It's a good all-around knife. And this would be something more appropriate for cutting something like an acorn. First use that point get to, the point into it, the to, control to it. get it started, and then you can work your way around using that slicing motion and then it's a lot safer way to, uh, to cut an acorn swatch. It's one of the toughest things to cut in the kitchen, and, uh, and it's a good knife for, so the, for those kind of things. So you get the point in it first, like this is the same knife here? Right, and you pierce that in there, and then if you notice, if you just push the knife, it's pretty difficult, you get that slicing action, and then it, uh, it opens it up pretty well and, and fairly safely. Um, keep so your thumb your out of the way, right? Knife. That's right, keep the other fingers out of the way. Uh, here's a paring knife, everyone knows that's for uh, peeling and for uh, destemming small things. We have a bread knife. These are slicer knives for uh, slicing the cooked meats, mm -hmm. uh, boneless cooked meats. This uh, fluting here is called a Granton edge. That, Let's uh, take a look at that here. So this, this has got those little grooves in it. What does, called, it what does that do? It uh, creates air between the food and the blade, and that air then causes the food to fall off the blade. Sometimes the food will stick to the blade, yeah. and that's the purpose of that's called Granton uh, edge and that fluting is to put air between and so the food falls off the blade. Okay, so if you're going to cut something like really thin, like you want to cut a ham really thin mm -hmm. or maybe roast beef, ham is probably easier to cut, but uh -huh. which, which one of these would you use? I mean, they both work fine. Um, it just uh, sometimes, uh, particularly if you're cutting a lot of slices, so they're kind of stacking up, uh, you want it to fall away. If you're cutting uh, really thick slices, it's, um, it's something that uh, it's nice to have. It's, a lot of times it costs more in the knife, uh, but that fluting is, is nice for, for even for, uh, say, if you're slicing almost anything, uh, it'll, it'll cause that food to then fall off the blade. Mm -hmm. Now, I see this here. A lot of people use this as a bread knife, but I cheat and use this for tomatoes once in a while. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of people ask me why not have every knife serrated, and, uh, and the reason is it creates a, a jagged cut. It tears stuff. And it tears stuff, and if you're going to consume it right away, it'll be okay, but if you uh, cut meat, say, with it, the meat will dry out as you're cooking it. If you're cutting vegetables and you're storing them any length of time, they'll turn brown quicker oh, they with, will. A, with a more ragged cut. Because it rips them up. It rips them up. It's uh, open to more oxidation, and so they'll turn brown quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, these three knives are the butcher knives. I saw this in an Alibaba movie. Yeah, that that's the, that's the, actually they call that a scimitar, uh, kind of like the scimitar sword, yeah. and uh, the, uh, um, it's also called a steak knife, and unlike your table steak knife, that's the knife for making steaks. So cut, cutting that, uh, like the strip steaks off the loin. Right. 
Right, and uh, so these three knives with the curved blade are butcher knives. They have a curved blade because they're designed to cut raw meat, which is a bit tougher than cutting uh, cooked meat. Mm -hmm. That's why the slicer has a straight blade, and this has a curved blade. Um, they have the curve in the knife for a couple reasons. Uh, one is if, as you're, uh, we could try this with the, um, with the uh, breaker knife. As um, if you're cutting something big, you tend to rock it, mm -hmm. and uh, so the the curved blade Gets mimics mi mimics that rocking motion. Uh -huh. Also, uh, that rocking motion. Um, transfers the, the point of attack, the, 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 the force of it back and forth and so you get a better cut that way. Uh, it also promotes slicing and that slicing action is what, uh, is what causes the knife to really perform well. People quite often make the mistake of trying to just push a knife through and that does not use the blade the way it's You're meant to, to be. Pull it. It's supposed to be this slicing back mm -hmm. and forth and that's how you get that um, that good performance out of a knife. Uh, I like using the breaker knife in a, in a lot of functions, uh, and also if you have a whole um, a chicken or turkey or something like that, you could get in some boning and slicing so at the curl, same time. You can curl around some of those bones and cartilage and things, mm -hmm. and do the slicing as well. It's a very uh, universal knife to use. So you use this knife, you're only using about an inch of it, like you say. In this one, you get more action. Yeah, if, if this has uh, you know this is really designed more for slicing. One reason why they have the curve at the front is to uh, give a little bit of, um, uh, you can you could do some chopping, um, but you could also you could also do a, you know a little bit of slicing with a chef knife, and that gives a lot of versatility. They have these uh, knives you see at the cooking shows, the uh, Santuku knife, mm -hmm. where the blade's flatter. Yeah. Um, that's really more of a sushi knife, just for like chopping and stuff. Uh, the um, the traditional French knife or chef knife has a little more flexibility with the with the curved blade. Excellent. Okay, so if you want to go to his place, Ambrose, uh, it's, it's, it's Ambrose has teaks outside, right? Well, it's a different you know, frontage, but yeah. yeah, service wet grinding across the street from the Cleveland State Convocation yeah. Center downtown, Easy now to called find. the Woolseed Center, right downtown. Yes. Yeah, I take my knives there, man. They always come back great. You come back in a little box, too, so you don't cut your hands off in the car with them. That's a really nice move. Okay, still to come on New Day Cleveland. We're moving from the kitchen to the bathroom. Easy ideas to redesign and update any size space. We'll be right back.